This morning, we thank you for your goodness to us. Uh, I thank you, Lord, that you give us another day that we can serve you and worship you. Uh, Lord, thank you for helping us through this morning and watching over us. And even though things were kind of, uh, out, of out of the ordinary this morning, thank you for bringing us through that. Uh, Lord, I thank you for bringing us here safely. I want to answer prayer that is. Uh, also be with the Sowers, Lord. I pray that you help him. Mm -hmm. Brother Sowers and, and uh, the sickness and things he's going through right now. Uh, watch over him. We do ask uh, for this. Lord, we love you. Thank you. It's so good to be in your house. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. <clears throat> Speaking about true love and what it is, and uh, it made me think this morning, uh, 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 page 188, and this, uh, we have it in this song book here. Uh, can't talk about the love of God without this song coming to mind. You don't have to look there. I'm just going to read it just to remind us. Uh, but it says, could we with ink, uh, could we with ink the ocean fill, and where the skies of parchment made, where every stock on earth a quill, and every man is scribed by trade, to write the love of God above would drain the ocean dry, nor could this grow contain the whole, go stretch from sky to sky. O love of God, how rich and pure, how measureless and strong, it shall forevermore endure, the saints and angels song. Beautiful song. Uh, they made a movie about that. I don't know if you've seen it. Uh, what is it called? Ind Indescribable. Indescribable. And uh, it's dealing with the story behind the song. And uh, it's, a, it's a wonderful song. I mean, wonderful music. You haven't said it. I haven't seen it yet. It goes from an old Jewish proverb. Uh, <clears throat> all right, 1 Corinthians 13. 1 Corinthians 13. <clears throat> Wonderful passage on this subject this morning. Verse 1. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I am become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecies and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, all is all. Understand all mysteries and all knowledge. And though I have faith, you remember it ends on the in note of faith at the end of the chapter as well. And though I have all faith so that I can remove mountains, that's pretty amazing faith. And have not charity, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, and have not charity, it profiteth me nothing. You see all this wording is nothing in between. It's just all. It's, I am nothing. And it says again, verse 3, I am nothing. I profit me nothing. Verse 4, charity suffereth long. Sometimes it's hard to do, isn't it? No flesh of ours. Suffereth long in his time. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself. It's not puffed up. Doth not behave itself unseemly. Seeketh not her own. That's also a difficult time, isn't it? Aren't you so, wouldn't be glad one day when we put off this flesh of ours? Amen? We have to have to battle with the flesh. It wants to be in control. It seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil. Rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth. Beareth all things, <clears throat> believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. That's a lot. And then it says in verse first part, first part of verse 8, charity never faileth. All these absolutes. Let's skip over to the last verse of chapter 13. And now abideth, <clears throat> now abideth faith, hope, charity. These three, and they're all great. And these three, but the greatest of these is charity. When Paul wrote 1 Corinthians 13, uh, they had a problem, the church did, didn't it, with love. And uh, that's why we see this chapter here. They have forgotten uh, their love. Uh, I believe forgot their love of, of God, that God's love towards them. And so therefore, they forgot their love towards uh, others. 
Uh, he hit the nail on the head when it, when it comes to defining love. We see everything that love is to be right there in 1 Corinthians 13. And uh, we ask the question, what is true love? True love is God. Amen? Uh, you cannot separate God and true love. And uh, the world is starving for it. And for the most part, it's not finding true love. Amen? And uh, there's several reasons why. I think one of them is, uh, if you could turn there real quick, Brother Robert, I have a verse for you. I just found it. Okay. Matthew 24, 12. Matthew 24, 12. And as soon as you find it, uh, I'll have you read that. Uh, Matthew 24, 12 tells us uh, one of the reasons I believe uh, there's very little love. Uh, I believe the other part is uh, the world has thrown God out of the picture. You throw God out of the picture, uh, you throw out love. And I've seen that in our own country, uh, in Czech Republic. Uh, it is 85% atheist, the, the most uh, atheistic country in the world. And when you throw God out as they did, uh, you throw out love. You see a very loveless society uh, without much love at all. And just about anything goes. And uh, no thank you. I was, we were knocking on doors the other day and we came across this guy and says, uh, I don't believe God. I don't believe him. When I die, I die. And I said, I, I spent 23 years in a country that also didn't believe in God. And I saw their life and I said, no thank you. Amen. No, thank you. Uh, so, uh, Brother Robert, do you have that for us? Matthew 24 and verse 12. <clears throat> and because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Amen. And the more you see iniquity abound, and we definitely see it now, you see love out the window. True love. The only love that we really see today, a uh, big percentage of it is selfish love. And selfishness and love cannot coexist uh, together. So I believe there's a couple reasons because the iniquity that abounds and they throw God out of the picture. Uh, uh, when they do that, it's called humanism. I looked up the word the definition of humanism and it says it's a system of thought attacking the prime importance to mankind instead of God. Man is the center of the world. And when that goes on, uh, there's not any love. There's, there's just uh, very little of it. When you remove God from the picture, you remove our purpose, don't you? And, uh, and so who has, uh, uh, Brother Gray, Revelations 4.11. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. That's our purpose in a nutshell, isn't it? That we were created for his pleasure. And unless something is doing for what it's created for, it's, it's for nothing. Amen? And uh, I can take this tripod over here and take it outside and start using it like a rake and, and raking up leaves. That's not what it's created for. Uh, you're going to have a real pain trying to get all those leaves together with that. Now, if you get a rake that's made for it, uh, it's going to work fine. Amen? And a lot of people are trying to do something with this old body that God never had plans on. Amen? And they're not serving Him, and they're walk, working, walking around without any purpose and meaning in their life. He created us, and uh, He has all right to us. Uh, <clears throat> we were not created for ourselves. And when we start doing and living for ourselves, love goes out the window. When a person, the world takes God out of the equation, all you're left with all of a sudden is a world that's all about me. And it should not be. <clears throat> what do I want and not what does God want? Uh, you remove purpose, but when you remove God from the world, what else you're, are you removing? You're, like I said already, remove, remove love of God, love of God. From the picture. First uh, John 4, uh, Sister Gray, First John 4, verse 7 through 8. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God, and knoweth God. He that loveth not, knoweth not God, for God is love. God is love. 
his love. God says in his word, in the last day, society will not be able to throw out God out of society fast enough. And we're seeing that today. Uh, we're there. Uh, therefore, people are knowing less and less of what true love is. Look with me, look with us, me together in 2 Timothy. <clears throat> we'll look at this together. 2 Timothy chapter 3. <clears throat> Second Timothy chapter three, verse one through three. <clears throat> it said, "This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come." Just look at the news, and you know that's happening. We're over. They say over forty major conflicts going on right now as they speak. Forty. You just don't. Our news don't report on hardly any of them. But major conflict, some of them have been going for a long time. Uh, for men shall be lovers of their own selves. <clears throat> These are all anti-love. Covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good. In the last days, people without, it says without, many of them there, we can pick it in, but without a natural affection. Uh, we see it in the news all the time of uh, parents killing children. Uh, one comes to mind, it's, it must be several years ago now, but you remember it hit, headline news was there for a long time where uh, a mother strapped her kids in, um, in the baby seats in the back seat and backed it into the lake or whatever it was. This is beyond reason. I mean, it's just, how could a mother do that? Uh, and children caring, killing parents and, and uh, it's uh, all kinds of stuff that's been going on and it's, it's horrible. Uh, and we'll look at some more of this in a minute. Uh, when God is important in one's life, everything else has a greater importance. When he's of great importance, everything else has greater importance. Our spouses have greater importance. Our children have greater importance. Everything sets in order. Uh, without it, there's, there's chaos uh, that pursues. <clears throat> so what is true love? When the world says true love is usually only of a selfish nature, they don't say it like this, I found my true love. Now I may get some people in trouble here this morning, but did you ever say that about your spouse? You tell somebody, I think I found my true love. We say it a different, different way, I no doubt, but you say, well, I found my true love. Uh, a lot of time, and I'll finish this statement, is in a selfish manner. I said, I found my way, uh, I found my true love, my knight in shining armor. I found my name tonight. Her last name is Knight. <laughs> but it's kind of switched, didn't it? <laughs> but uh, uh, I found my knight in shining armor. Or he or she does everything right by me. It's got to be true love. And uh, uh, there was a, an article published. Uh, <clears throat> and it says when to call it quits. Talking about uh, couples. And uh, married couple. This is, it's to, and it was published in an article in the newspaper saying, when is, it, when is it, when to call it quits? And it's, it's all selfish. They're, they listed eight in this newspaper article. It says, when to call it quits? You're only staying because of religion. What's that? You need, your needs aren't being met. You lost respect for your partner. You don't feel attracted to that person anymore. You have a hard time forgiving. You no longer have fun together. Your long-term goals no longer match. Growth philosophy. It's just all selfish, 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 selfish. True love is selfless and unconditional. See so much of this in our world today, 
Uh, there was another article here that was published, and it says, how can a mother leave her children? And uh, it says, for most women, it's the one bond, and this is a true story, and this is the article that they put in the paper. For most women, it's the one bond they never break. But as this special report reveals, an increasing number are walking out on their families. Leslie Darcy's children were six, six and seven years old when she pulled them onto her lap, hugged them, and gently announced that mommy had some news. As they listened in wide-eyed innocence, she explained that she had decided to leave their home. Uh, this was in, in uh, England, I believe. Uh, leave their home in the provinces and move away to a place called London where she could be alone. Now she's telling her children this. I can't make you happy, she said, smiling down at their tearful faces. And mommy isn't happy herself. Just how much of that traumatic conversation little Alice and Robert will carry into adulthood remains to be seen. But Leslie admits the news came as a crushing blow. With incredible understatement, she said, oh, they were completely devastated, just as any six and seven year old would be. They didn't understand, it was really hard. Not hard enough to stop Leslie walking out of her marital home and moving to London to pursue her dream of a career, a decision she doesn't regret. That's without an actual affection. It says, uh, and this kind of, this old, a little bit older stats there in, in England, but there are now 100,000 mothers living, up, living apart from their children in the UK with a disturbing 12% increase every year. That's without natural affection. Uh, true love is selfless and unconditional. God as our example. Amen. True love, love is when they are, uh, you love is when, they are, when things are difficult. And when that person is being difficult. Love is with no plan B in mind. Gets up at two in the morning with the sick child. Endures each other even in rough times. Amen. Always working at it. I remember my dad when I was assistant pastor, and they were always, the younger couple was always going to my dad and says, when does it get easier? When does it get easier? And he said, after seven years, it starts getting easier. And, and, uh, and then he kept adding to that. Oh, yeah, pastor, you get to that mark, and then all of a sudden you change it. And 10 to 15 and 20, you know what? Uh, it's, it's always, you have to work at it, amen, no matter how, how long it's been. And, but real work, real love works at it. You know, true love, we could put it in one verse, is John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten. He didn't so love the world that he took. Amen? <clears throat> he gave. You remember this, <clears throat> and uh, I didn't write down because my life depended on it. I could, probably couldn't remember. But you remember the food triangle? I think in the latter years they changed that. It's not necessarily, I don't know what it is. It is I mean, a a pyramid, uh, I don't know if they changed it to a saucer or whatever, I don't know. But uh, you had the, I don't know, remember what was at the top? Sugar? Sugar was at the top? The smallest nut. The smallest nut, uh-huh, I thought it was an element of importance. Uh, the reason it stopped at the top, well, sugar, that's why I'm doing it good then. But anyways, sugar and dairy and bread and all these things go all the way down to the food pyramid, and they said that will produce a healthy life if you stick to that pyramid uh, <clears throat> shows the level of importance and uh, well, I guess I'm not the but we can say that about the love pyramid you get this right and you get love right and you say well what is the, the pyramid in regards to love well Matthew 22 <clears throat> turn with me to Matthew 22 Matthew 22 <clears throat> and this is a pyramid for <clears throat> you say Trying to pour love. <clears throat> Matthew 22, verse 36. It says, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, Thou hast. Am I reading somebody else's? I don't think I am. There we go. Jesus said unto him, Thou hast. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. 
<clears throat> on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. It places the proper priority. God's love God first and love others second. You love God first and, and uh, loving others is doable. We say it that way. You notice something in this in this pyramid that God gives us. Love the Lord thy God first is the first great commandment, and the second is to love others as thyself. You see what's missing from this one? <clears throat> Ourselves. We, we it sounds nice to cliche. We say joy, Jesus first, others second, yourself last. But in God's equation, we're not there. Amen. Uh, we're not in it, and uh, and I think sometimes. Uh, some of the problems. <clears throat> uh, in God's love, He teaches us how to be the parents we're to be. Uh, in His love, as we get to know His, we get to know the love and how we're to love. How to be the husband or wife we're to be. Uh, how we are to be when it comes to love, period. As we get, He teaches us those things. And uh, uh, as we love, <clears throat> If we truly love God, like Matthew 22 tells us, then we'll obey Him and do His will. And that sets everything else in order. Uh, but we live in a day where everyone wants to get love, but no one wants to give love. Amen? And it, we say it's based on whether He deserves it or not. And sometimes we're like that too. I'll never forget a daughter, and they, they did this on news, and I believe it was American news. I get confused where I saw it. But uh, uh, they were interviewing this girl because the, this parents would not give her what she wanted. And she said there on news, she told her mom and dad to rot in hell. That's what she told her. Oh, wow. Another girl, I remember, she went and she sued her parents because they wouldn't pay something at, at the university that needed to be paid. And so she sued her parents to get the money. And, uh, and people were interviewing her saying, how can you do that to your own parents? And, uh, and uh, that's the, the day in which we live. But God's love is an example for us all. Uh, we see his unconditional love throughout the scriptures. And the first place that we see, uh, where we see his unconditional love is in the air of salvation. Amen? So much love in regards, when you read the salvation message, Ephesians 2, 4 says, But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love, not just love, but great love, wherewith he loved us. Praise God. 1 John 4, 10. Uh, 1 John 4, 10 uh, and 19 is Sister Lisa. Herein is love, <clears throat> not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Amen. We love him because he first loved us. And that's how we're to love those around us. You hear this thing sometimes, they say, well, I'll forgive them once they come and ask for forgiveness. I'm sure glad God didn't do that. Amen. He loved us when we were, yes. didn't want to have anything to do with me. We were on his mind when we were hanging, he was hanging on the cross. And uh, uh, we love him, not because we're so great, we love him because he first loved us. He gave us the chance, amen. Uh, Romans 5, 8, I love this verse. Sister Shirley. But God connected his love toward us and that while we're yet sinners, Christ died for us. Yes, amen. Isn't that great? That is great. That's and he said to Jerusalem, oh, Jerusalem, oh, Jerusalem, how we gather uh, as a hand gathered through chickens, but G would not. But you know what? He still died for them. He still died for them. He's, he, he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And uh, he stood still. So we see his unconditional love and salvation, but we also see his unconditional love when it comes to his relationship with Israel. Israel, I would say, most of the time, you take years and split them up. For most of the times, they were not loving God like they were supposed to for years wise. And yet, uh, God still sought after them. He still uh, wanted them to repent. He still wanted, and He still loved them. 
And uh, we see it uh, throughout the Old Testament. But you see in Jeremiah 2, uh, verse 32, uh, Brother Phil, would you read that for us? Jeremiah 2, 32. Can, can a man forget a woman or a bride or a child? Yet my people have forgotten me days without number. Forgotten me days without number. And he still sought after them. Wayward Israel, a nation who had forgotten God, had sinned against him constantly, but God showed mercy constantly. He, he looked after them, and he, he, he still loved them still. He sent, still sent his prophets still. And he, he put them in captivity, but that was to even safety for them in, in a way. So they, and uh, to correct them in his love, he, he corrected them. God loved them, and often with nothing in return. Um, I talking about this, the, the, uh, what we see in our world today. Um, I'll look at this. I'll say this in just a minute. Let's continue with this thought. But Jesus uh, showed his unconditional love uh, by the people he dealt with. We see it quite often uh, in scriptures. Uh, Zacchaeus, nobody wanted to have anything to do with Zacchaeus. Uh, for the most part, people uh, had written him off and he was not welcome in society. Uh, he showed up and everybody left. It was that type of thing. They, but uh, God saved him. Uh, God, the society rejected him, but God accepted him. Uh, the woman, woman at the well, she wasn't uh, above reproach. She wasn't uh, uh, a woman that most wanted to have anything to do with. That's why... I've heard the story many times, and you look at the time that she came. She came in the middle of the day. Why? Because you usually they would go in the mornings to go draw the water, and that was all the the, the women of reputation. She was not welcome there, so she had to come when she uh, when she could, and she came at noon in the heat of the day uh, because she was rejected by society. And uh, the woman at the well, uh, but God received her. Uh, God knew their hearts. We also see the lady here uh, in Luke 7. If you turn with me in Luke chapter 7, uh, we see God's unconditional love here. Luke chapter 7 and verse 36. <clears throat> I love this story. What hope it is for us. Amen. In Luke 7 and verse 36 to 39. It says, and one of the Pharisees desired him that he would eat with him. And he went into the Pharisee's house and sat down to meet. And behold, a woman in the city, which was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus sat at meat in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster box of ointment and stood at his feet behind him, weeping, and began to wash his feet with tears and did wipe them with the hairs of her head and kissed his feet and anointed them with an ointment. She was so Glad to be forgiven, amen, and that God was, was cared enough for her. Now when the Pharisee which had bidden him saw it, he spake within himself, saying, This man, if he were a prophet, would have known who and what manner of woman this is that toucheth him, for she is a sinner. Uh, Jesus agreed that she had much sin, but God still loved her. Uh, he said how... Uh, how many sins that she had there in uh, verse 47. It says, Wherefore I say unto you, her sins which are many are forgiven. For she loved much, but to whom little is forgiven, the same loveth little. God loved her. Jesus loved her with unconditional love. And lastly, we see his unconditional love just us this morning that's sitting here this morning. Amen? People know uh, us, but we know ourselves better than anybody else. And God loved us. He was merciful to us and forgave us. And uh, where would we be today if God had not loved us? Amen? Uh, and you can only imagine. But uh, Jesus, thank God, for his unconditional love. And when we're uh, with him and close with him, uh, we, we get to learn. Do you think we can increase in love? In our knowledge of love? Absolutely. Yeah. We don't know all there is to know about love, do we? Yeah, we get more. Yeah, amen. 
How can we increase in love? By knowing the God of love. And, uh, and we need to uh, go on, on to perfection, to completeness in it. Um, this world is, is spinning out of control. And uh, you see that when you look at statistics. I, I've read one here of the USS Census Bureau. And uh, it said the number of single fathers has been rising steadily. Uh, it said from 600,000 in 1982 to more than 2 million in 2016. And uh, the last that was given was now, it, or the last was from 2022, and it said it's over 7 million uh, single uh, fathers. Uh, and also, in fact, recent studies have shown that number of moms who are running away from it all are now dub dubbed, the society dubbed them as walk away moms is on the rise. And, uh, and our society is getting to the point where they're knowing uh, less and less about love. Iniquity abounds. And you can't hold on to hands uh, with that and love at the same time. And uh, that's why it's so powerful when we as Christians can have that love shown to the world because they, they can't. Those that know God are capable of doing uh, the same. <clears throat> love is a marking of those that know God and are saved. Amen. Somebody read uh, John 13, 34 to 35. Uh, that's... Uh, my wife. A new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye have love one to another. Amen. And uh, uh, that speaks louder than words. Uh, you, they hear us, but love is so powerful uh, when we actually show it. We show it to somebody. Uh, that is not worthy of it. Uh, I've told you the example of our neighbor there, uh, Paul. Uh, I can't think of the right name. Paul, I'm sorry. And uh, <clears throat> uh, he was unworthy. And uh, I wanted to jump all over him because uh, he was trying to tell us what to do with our backyard. And I finally had one after many, many years in the field. And, uh, and so, but God said, uh, tone it down and uh, do everything he wants you to do. And so I began to check off everything he told me to do. And I said, this is going to be interesting. And uh, he began to see something different in us than what has been shown him in the past. Everyone else would not give him the time of day. His circle of friends, but he didn't have one. His own mother had not seen him in 20 years because they just couldn't put up with him. But we started showing him love. It reversed him. Uh, he wanted to hear about our God. Uh, and on and on it goes, and uh, we need to uh, we need to show unconditional love uh, to the loveless, uh, <clears throat> those without love. First John four, we read this earlier, but First John four uh, <clears throat> seven through ten. First John four seven through ten. It says. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God, and knoweth God. He that loveth not, knoweth not God, for God is love. And this was manifested, the love of God towards us, because that God sent his only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through him. Herein is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be a propitiation for our sins. And then we see verse 20. If any man say, I love God, and hateth his brother, he's a liar. He's a liar. And who's the father of lies? The devil. And hateth his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother, whom he hath seen, how can he love God, whom he hath not seen? And uh, I've known Christians, uh, they called themselves Christians, that hated it. God said, you, you just, once you start hating, you just can't be right with God. Amen? And you're not right until you get that taken care of. And if you can live continually, 10, 15, 20 years, hating that brother, something wrong somewhere. Amen? And God said, you can't love me and uh, that you can't see and, and, and not love somebody you can see. Um, <clears throat> all right, we got a few minutes here. Uh, it's an amazing thing that we can 
be a recipient of God's love, uh, that God loves us. John 15, uh, 13. Miss Debbie, would you read that for us? Greater love has no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Greater love hath no man. You know, we're getting in on the Saturday is November 11th, uh, Veterans Day. We appreciate the veterans that gave their life for us and put their life on the line for our freedom. And I'm thankful that we have the day to, to do that, to remember. And uh, God said, there's no greater love than that, than a, a man who laid down his life for his friend. So the more we know God, the more we know of love. And in return, we know better how to love others. And uh, we learn it from him. For the most part, we, we understand his love. Uh, we most part, we misunderstand his love, rather. <clears throat> All right, we have just a few more verses. Look at Romans 8.31. And uh, Sister Monica, would you read that? 8.31 and verse 32. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? There it is again. Love, how much he loves us, and he freely giveth. Love gives. Love doesn't take. Amen? You hear so many in churches, people come and they'll come to church and they'll say, what do you have to offer me? I like what Kennedy said. He said, don't ask uh, what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. Yeah. And I believe that's applicable to the church as well. Love gives, uh, no doubt. Love gives. So how are we in this area of love? How, how are we in this area? How is our unconditional love this morning? Uh, we'll read this one last time. Look at 1 uh, Corinthians again, verse 13. And we'll read some of these verses real quick. <clears throat> Verse 4, 1 Corinthians 13, verse 4. Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity bondeth not. Itself is not puffed up. Doth not behave itself unseemly. Seeketh not her own. Is not easily provoked. Thinketh no evil. You know, it's easy to match up. Maybe our love looks pretty good. We match up to certain people. But this is, basically, this is God's. Amen? This is His love. This is, are we matching up to what we were reading here? Verse 5, Doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil, rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth, beareth all things, believeth, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things, and charity never faileth. His love causes us to obey, constrains us. Do we have God's love this morning? If we're saved, we have His love. We do, but do we show it? Do we show it? We need to ask God to have His perfect will in us, amen? And uh, to love is sometimes we have to grit our teeth, amen? We have to hold back from what we want to say. And uh, I'm so glad that God loved us when we were yet unlovely. Amen? Uh, we need to give people the benefit of the doubt. We need to uh, not say things when we don't want, uh, when we want to say something. And uh, so God, and show God's mercy and long suffering endureth all things. Amen? Not just some things. All right. Lord, we love you this morning. We thank you for your word that has much to say about love. We say there's one central theme throughout the scriptures, it would be love, from Genesis to Revelations. And uh, God is love, and love is God. Lord, I thank you for this morning. We thank you for uh, being with us, and pray that you bless in our, our main service today. Uh, have your will and way. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Some, 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 if, if, if they, if they have We'd like to have your Bible bag. It's not there. It may be on the wrong aisle. I think it's maybe behind.
good fixes. There you go. He had all the several views moved because he was working on the steel beams. So he had all the views were moved out of the way. He had drop cloths and ladders and everything. So he was putting everything back. He probably just put the, uh, these, the, the, this key, he just probably put it in the long spot. Good morning. Nice to have you guys here. Good morning. Good morning.